Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 317, The Magic of Blood Tests, What Doctors Are Looking For in Your Results. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So doctors regularly order blood tests. Doctors' offices regularly order blood tests. As a patient who calls and says, oh, we need to get your blood test, I just assume that's a standard thing. And you've taught me that it is not, that there are literally hundreds of iterations, thousands of blood, thousands tests. Of iterations <laughs> of blood tests. Yeah. And each, each thing that you ask for gives a different piece of information. So at your office, you ask patients who go online and fill out the application information to, to make an appointment to get their blood tests and have that data sent to you before they come in. Because part of what you're looking at is to say, are you a viable candidate? Is this a good idea for you to do mm-hmm. what we do? Do you need it? Do you not need it? Is it too early or what have you? So <clears throat> when you look at thousands of pieces of data points that you could get from, from a set of blood tests, And you order a specific checklist of numbered items. What are you looking for? What what does your set consist of? Let's talk about that. Okay, so most doctors are looking for just your blood count because it can tell you certain things about your health to see if you have some underlying sickness. They look at your... Like how many red blood cells, white blood cells? Right. And And I order that as well. But I've got a lot more reasons to order it. And I go through... That test, it's a health test. So in general, I'm ordering health tests like every other doctor. I'm looking at metabolic profile, which is liver, kidneys, and and blood sugar level. Then I'm also looking at blood count. I look at lipids. These are all blood tests that I look at to see if you're healthy. And in in that healthy part, I'm looking to see if there's something we can help. Like so so. You go in and, and the nurse takes a little vial of blood out of your arm. It actually or 12 takes vials. 10, 12, 15 vials. <laughs> For but my blood They test. put those in a machine and then the data that comes back can tell them how your liver is functioning, mm-hmm. how much sugar is in your blood, mm-hmm. uh, what your cholesterol mm-hmm. is. So there are like 15 different blood tests that you ask for. There are 15, pa- most of them panels. are panels. Yes. And most of them have, contain a lot of different blood tests. Mm-hmm. So when I'm looking at that, I'm ordering health tests, okay? So I need to know if somebody's healthy enough to have have hormone replacement Mm -hmm. or is there something in their health I can help because I'm in preventive medicine. I want to prevent diabetes. I want to treat it. I I want to make sure that people are on the way to being healthy as well. And then I look at blood tests that are hormonal because all the hormones go together. All the hormones work together. So I'm looking for something all like one blood test from each gland at least Mm -hmm. to see if the hormonal homeostasis or the balance Balance. is working and what I can adjust. Because once I adjust testosterone and estrogen, everything else starts changing a little bit too. So I need to make sure that I'm not causing something to become worse or I'm trying to make things better. So I'm trying to bring everybody back to young, healthy, normal of all their hormones. Okay. So that's that's the hormonal. Then I'm looking at blood mm-hmm. tests for different factors that could cause me to misdiagnose, like prolactin. If I look at somebody's blood test, it looks like their ovary or, or testicle isn't working, but it could just be that they have a tumor in their pituitary, and I don't want to miss that. Okay. So that's So that's like the third part. And then the last part has to do with what possibly could I make worse or can I make better by using bioidentical testosterone and estrogen? So those tests are there just do no harm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to cause problems. And I want to troubleshoot if somebody already has one of those problems. I don't want to make it worse. Mm-hmm. So those are the reasons that I do blood work. And it's critical that I don't just go, oh, yeah, your blood work's fine. 
that's not how blood work should be interpreted with you as the patient. Because you don't know what blood work I ordered and you don't know what it means to me. Yeah, I don't know at all. And you don't and you don't know exactly what part of each of blood panel is telling me about you and you should know that. Well, <laughs> I mean, you should know that because you shouldn't worry about things you don't have. Right. If your cholesterol is fine, well, I should why, are you, why should you worry about that? Right. Well, you told me in preparation for this podcast that there are five things that you are trying to determine from blood tests. Mm -hmm. And that the first one is whether or not I'm a candidate for testosterone replacement. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you decide if I'm a candidate? What, what are the ingredients that go into that decision? So I'm, use, I'm looking mostly, for men, I'm looking at their total testosterone and free testosterone. Okay? okay. So total is all the testosterone that is in the bloodstream, all right. but very little of it is active. And active testosterone is call, called free. Okay. So Active means it's not bound to something else. It's not blocked by being attached to something. It's right. available for use by the testosterone receptor sites. Right. All over your body. Okay. So it bathes your body in this level of free of active testosterone the rest is invisible right the rest when i look at total testosterone that tells me are you making enough which is usually what doctors look at they look at just are you making enough so, so those are two specific data points that you get in mm -hmm. your blood test mm -hmm. and most doctors just look at total mm -hmm. and, and so you can have a i see totals that are over 400 which is kind of the magic line for me for is this person is this man normal and i see 500 but then when i look at their free or their active part it's very low and that means they don't feel their testosterone that's bound up and inactivated they so it's just invisible feel invisible to the receptor sites right. the body it's doesn't invisible know it's in to there. your body okay so it's as if you don't have any but it tells me that you're making it right so then i look at the free or the unbound that's active and i say how can I make that more active? Can I lower estrogen? So I look at the estrogen level, the estrone and the estradiol level. Is Those are two hormones men make. So we're talking about men right here. So, I mean, we can go back and talk about women as well. But, but when, when I look at men, and it's one of the one things, it's one of the things that is so misdiagnosed by people who don't really read about this all the time. But I look at the estrogen levels. The, if the estrogen levels are high, that binds up more of their testosterone. So they have very they have less to use. Uh -huh. So sometimes I just look at people and say, a man, and I say, you're making it. Right. You have low active and you have a lot of estrogen. I don't need to give you more. I just need to give you a drug called Arimidex so that then you can use what you're making. And that often works. Okay, so, so it's kind I, of like a chemistry lab experiment. Yes. You look at all these ingredients and mm -hmm. try to find the balancing points that are defined as, quote, normal, mm -hmm. but really you're looking at symptom alleviation, whatever the presenting symptoms I'm looking take. at all of this to see if there's a malfunction mm -hmm. in production or, in, or okay. in availability and all the other hormones that, in, that interact with this. Well, that's the second then, thing that you told me you were but, looking for. But I also have to look at symptoms. So sometimes I'll have a man with no symptoms. No symptoms say, at all. I was driving by and saw your sign and thought I'd stop in. Well, and then I look at his lab, and if his lab's normal and his symptoms are, are zip, then I just have, you know, I have this, my staff call him and say, here's your, we're sending you your lab. Right. You're very healthy in this way. Just take these labs to your primary care, or I'll or you can come in and I'll talk to you about it. Right. But you're normal and healthy and great. See you later. So right now you're Five more years, you may not be, you right. may not be well. Yeah. Because this is, these are hormones that drop with age. So that's, that's the first, first thing. I have to have symptoms and I have to have a testosterone level that looks like you need either augmentation or you need replacement. So you don't just sell them to everybody? No. No. In fact, people aren't happy when I tell them that they don't need this because they may not feel well, mm -hmm. but it's something else. Something else is causing them not to feel well. It could be psychological. It could be, I mean... I don't mean they're crazy. I just mean it could be some stress that they have. Right. Or it could be some other medical illness that that's why I send them their lab to take to their primary doctor. Okay. So that they can then look for something else. All right. But if they have no symptoms, then they're well. I mean, really, someone with no symptoms, I can't imagine why they would take, uh, have blood drawn 15 
vials of blood just to see that they were normal because they don't have any symptoms of low testosterone. Well, or to be able to identify that the concerns that you are experiencing are not related to your physical condition. Mm -hmm. So you need to look in other places. Mm -hmm. And it could be overstress, uh, high anxiety or depression or something that isn't physiologically determined. It could be relationships, too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not... Or, I'm not or, qualified in that area. Right I there. just, you know, I have to refer to other people for that. I mean, I'm not a psychologist or a counselor like you Well, are. and you do that a lot. And, you refer to other physicians, other mm-hmm. kinds of physicians. Um, the, the third thing that you say you are attempting to do when you look at blood tests initially mm-hmm. is to determine a baseline right. so that if I do become your patient mm-hmm. and I do have hormone replacement, that we can then track in the follow-up visits the plus or minus for any of the de- deficits that you've identified. Right. So I know where you started. Right. And I know what symptoms you had when you were at this level. Mm-hmm. Then I bring you to this level and I coordinate that level with all the symptoms that, that got better. Right. Now, that may not be all of them. I may need to go a little higher. Mm-hmm. Or there may be some irritating side effects. Too much sexuality, if, if that's possible for some people, that's irritating. So then we either drop or increase the dose depending on the desires of the patient and, and their symptoms. But in general, we just have to do two blood tests, one before, one after the pellets. And then, because I've done this thousands of times, I can determine a maintenance dose. Right. That, because when I look at the second blood test, that tells me how fast you used up your hormones, mm-hmm. dependent on the dose, because that there's no test for that. Well, and that's the one real advantage to pellets, as opposed to the other delivery mechanisms for testosterone, is that the pellets generate an on-demand system within mm-hmm. your body. So as you are active, as you are upset or worried or whatever, your body requires uh, this to be contributed to, to the bloodstream. Cardiac output, output goes out goes up. <laughs> You absorb more of the pellet and it gets right. used up faster. So you can track that by doing additional blood tests periodically. Yes. And and usually I do one before, one after. Hopefully we're successful. Mm-hmm. And that's the level I look for all the time for that patient. My, that's my goal. Right. And then once a year or if something happens or they change their weight or their or job some or condition. some other condition, oftentimes we'll order lab when needed, mm-hmm. but we don't do what many formula kind of uh, franchises do that do hormones is, and that's order lab every time and then just decide on your dose right then. Because mm-hmm. honestly, that makes you go up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, it, it's not as, I mean, I know what it's going to do. I know how it's going to be absorbed. So part of this, and so does my staff. So we all know what it means to get this test, then this test, and then develop a maintenance dose. So you don't have to have lab every time. I mean, to me, that's kind of a waste of your insurance's money or your money yeah. to get lab every time. You well, ha- it's kind of an acute medicine approach to dealing with things. We right. look and see, are you in a crisis? Now, what, what's your snapshot today? Let's modify that. And we're and looking at chronic. Maintenance, chronic. Chronic maintenance long-term. all the time, long-term health. Well, And that's the fourth thing you say. Mm-hmm. You're looking to evaluate general health conditions. Right. Over a period of time, you're watching that because I continue to age. Mm-hmm. And my body continues to respond to the aging. And you continue to change your diet. And exercise. And, and exercise. Which, so oftentimes, somebody will be really good for the first year. Yeah. Everything gets better. Their pre-diabetes well, yeah, I'm goes panic. away. I'm going to have a heart yeah. attack. I'm going to die. So yeah. I'm going to be a lot better. And so, then when I get some wiggle room, I start to walk I go, past oh, the donut shop looks and say, wait a minute. Yeah, I somehow yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Yeah, well, you've been talking about what? <laughs> no, I've been watching you eat donuts. <laughs> so, so, yeah, every once in a while, you know, you, you I have to draw blood to see what's changing. Usually, it's not so much... The hormones that have changed or the dose, it's lifestyle or another drug came into play. Okay. You know, so oftentimes you'll metabolize your hormones um, more quickly if you have a lot of drugs that go through that same liver uh, breakdown system called P450. Lots of drugs are in that category. So the more drugs you have, the faster they break down all the drugs. So sometimes dosages all have to go up. Well, and there are other things that you do in addition to hormones that mm-hmm. are significant I don't understand it not my field you don't have to but I don't have to I just (laughs) take what you tell me Mm -hmm. Uh, but like supplements 
mm -hmm. uh, dietary supplements that balance different things like DIM mm -hmm. uh, that, that help you that are not a direct result of hormone replacement. Right. And so you monitor those mm -hmm. as well. Well, we use supplements like we would a medication, only supplements have the advantage of not having this, as many side effects as a medication, not having as much cost as a medication, and actually having milder changes. You don't have a big increase, big decrease when you take it and stop taking it. So it's usually a milder kind of method of, of tweaking your health. Mm -hmm. So we, we use DIM, we use magnesium. We, I mean, we have probably um, 20 uh, supplements. Iodine. Iodine. We use iodine a Midwest, lot. We're in the yeah. Midwest. We need iodine. Almost everyone needs iodine in their diet. Right. Um, and so we have a supplement because we don't get iodine in our diet very um, to any uh, extent. So mm -hmm. I'm looking for that. I'm also looking for the illnesses. You know, I talked about general health, but I'm also looking for preventing illnesses before they happen, like prediabetes, like Osteoporosis, like osteoporosis yeah. Alzheimer's, and, dementia. And so hormones fix Muscle loss. many of those things. If you use testosterone on an ongoing basis or you use estrogen uh, for women on an ongoing basis, sometimes that really does help. But sometimes we need some more help. Like if you have prediabetes, it'll help you a little. But then we have to use diet, exercise, and metformin, which is an right. inexpensive, old-fashioned medication which really helps prevent diabetes. It pulls people back from having type 2 diabetes, one of the biggest problems in America. But we also suggest diet exercise. Those right. are those are two Components. things that yeah. that we that we do. I have, I have to tell you I I saw um a friend of one of the people that helps um market for us mm -hmm. and she came in and she said and she went we went through her lab and so what we do is the very first visit and the second visit, everybody meets with me or my nurse practitioners, but usually with me, and they we go over each lab test and what it means and what it means to me mm -hmm. and what it means to that patient. And so I go through each piece of a blood count, each piece of a metabolic profile and say, your kidneys are great or you need to drink more water or... Your blood pressure medicine may be having a, giving you a problem with your kidneys. Maybe you should go back to your primary and get a different blood pressure medicine, okay. something like that. So I go through every single piece. And when I got done, done going through her whole evaluation, which was in general really healthy, she went, does blank know you do it this way? Because I have never had anyone go through my lab work like this. She, in general, doctors don't have time for that. I have hour-long visit. So right. because of that, I have time to go through it. Right. But the fact is, is that people need to know what they have and what they don't have. Well, you shouldn't like worry me, about everything. You should worry about what you have. If you're like me, you take your wife with you because right. I just zone out and my wife just is like a laser on this stuff. Yeah. And, and she takes she notes. She takes notes and then we go home. And some people tape it yeah. because they want to listen to it later, which is fine. I used to have people do that with my sessions mm -hmm. and counseling. Mm -hmm. They, they want to be able to revisit the conversation. Because if you're involved in this and asking you questions. Out, you get scared. Well, you get... you. Maybe, but sometimes people aren't scared, but they just get involved in it, and so they don't remember it. Yes. When you're involved in something, you don't always see the see the big picture and all the little details that go with it. So it's very important, I think, for someone's self-calming um, mechanism not to be afraid of everything. I mean, we hear things on television because right. it's a headline, afraid, afraid, afraid. You should be afraid of this, afraid of that. Right. Well, the bottom line is... You shouldn't be afraid of everything. You should be afraid of just whatever genetically and behaviorally you're at risk for. And if you have, if you don't have any sign of it in your lab, then in general, you're not at risk for it. So you should just wipe that off your worry list. There's something to be said for not worrying all the time. Absolutely. Amen. And so that's what I'm trying to do as a kind of a behind the scenes reason for doing it this way. Well, well let's... Pull this to a closure point by mm -hmm. talking about one more aspect of this, and that is throughout all of these conversations, the reference point that you make is to a concept called normal. Yeah. So talk a little bit about lab tests and normals. Okay. So lab tests, normal isn't normal when you're looking at the lab test. In other words, when you look at a printout, that's why it's really kind of dangerous 
for a patient to look at their printout and go, ah, I'm fine. Yeah. When you look at a printout, oftentimes the normals have not been adjusted for uh, your sex or haven't been adjusted for a hormone that drops with age. They compare you to somebody else who's your age. In your age cohort. That's In your age people cohort. People are the same age as you. Right. And so, so what happens is they're comparing sick people to sick people. Okay, so as we get older, three hormones uh, drop with age. One is growth hormone, one is testosterone, and one is estrogen. So these three hormones, when I'm looking at this, I have to write in normal, healthy, young, normal on there because they don't list it there. They list somebody else. And you've asked them to. Who's your, I've asked you've them asked to. You've asked the lab tests. Yeah, I've asked the labs to put in young, healthy, normal and they say that will confuse everyone. <laughs> so, I mean, it's easier, I guess, for doctors to just look down the list and go, oh, it's all in the normal column. So basically, mainstream medicine looks at a lab test and says, you're normal, meaning you're just like every other 70-year-old man. Right. Or you're like most of the other 70-year-old women. And I've told uh, that story about my dad saying, my total testosterone is fine. It's eight, one digit, uh-huh. eight. So he was 85. Right. But it's, that's never normal. Right. Usually it's 400 and above. So, I mean, but because it was 85, they didn't have data. So they well, just so wrote normal. You're, you're on schedule to die when you're supposed to. Right. Uh-huh. uh-huh. But not, you're not going to feel well right. for, from now until then. So the lab, the lab is putting in, and, and it varies, interestingly enough. They, they will age adjust things on some things, and they won't age adjust things on others. And then I don't know where they got their normals on many of these things. So I have to put in what I know is normal for a young, healthy woman or man, 20 to 20 to 40. That's when our hormones are normal. They all start dropping after 40. For those three main hormones. For those three main hormones. Also, FSH and LH, the two hormones that stimulate the testicles and, and the ovaries, they consider one... FSH and LH that are in the menopausal range or in the testicular failure range, which is really high and gives us hot flashes and night sweats and irritability and anxiety, all those symptoms go along with high FSH and LH. But if it's high, they still say it's normal because it's normal for someone who's old. To have these issues. Right. Okay. But that's not how I look at it. So I have to always write in all my optimal levels or normal levels. So so the lesson for today <laughs> is to understand that when a doctor asks for blood tests, they're asking for specific panels of information that give them data points and that they should be able to interpret that and explain that to you and that you should pay attention to that. You should understand what your data points are in determining your general health pattern and in determining whether or not something needs to be looked at for uh, optimizing your health span, which is not how long you live, but how long you live healthy lives. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to your blood tests. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.